Okay, I'd like to call this ordinance committee meeting to order Tuesday, June 7th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, at this time, please remember to uh, make sure your cell phones are turned off. And is there anybody else in the public who is uh, going to be taping this meeting? State your name, please. Angelo Trevisano. Thank you. Okay, we have um, actually present from the committee is myself, John Myers, and Dave Spotton. All of the members of council are present, with the exception of Mr. Pledge, who is absent and excused. From the administration, we have Mayor Morley and our CBO, Dave Men. And we have Mr. Vogler, who is here to uh, discuss uh, some additional information that we're going to be uh, in regards to the discussion of deer calling. Uh, once again, this meeting tonight uh, uh, is going to be for information and information only. Uh, and if, Mayor Morley, do you have anything you want to add? No, I think at, after our last meeting and the, the, the discussions I've had with Mr. Vogler over the last, uh, since the last meeting, is one, he wanted to show a permit that packet he was trying to look at and possibly a timeline uh, where City Council wants to possibly go with this or not go with it. So that's what we're here for. Okay. Mr. Volker, would you like to uh, add some additional information at this time? Yeah, the uh, funding packet that I presented to you, uh, it's a rough draft, of course. There are some uh, corrections and alterations. It's relatively simple to do. Basically, what we did is we looked at Mitter's Packet. Mitter's a program that is up and running, has been incredibly successful. We looked at Mitter Packet and we did some minor alterations to it. These alterations include uh, predominantly one is <coughs> Mitter's ordinance requires that you have to be within 100 feet inside of the property line, that, uh, the land that you have permission to hunt upon. Um, we altered that to be 50 feet, and he's like, the property lots in this city are significantly smaller. And so uh, we wanted to give a little bit more leeway there. Additionally, um, the Minner's ordinance requires that you do not have any hunting on Sunday. Um, it's never been made clear as to why that was part of the ordinance. Um, so that was discarded. Uh, additionally, um, the safety harnesses, I think that's a good addition to have for our uh, city to ensure that we, we kind of insulate ourselves from liability as well as uh, had to make sure that we focus around the idea of safety within city limits. Uh, additionally, we talked before about the idea of having no tree climbers and having ladder stands. Um, ladder stands are a lot safer. Uh, you can identify where the, it's the closest thing you have to a permanent structure in the middle of the woods, right? That's easily uh, erected and disassembled after the season. The packet I put together, I afforded the opportunity for the chief of police to make an exception if the DC spit. My thinking was, what if we have uh, uh, a resident of this municipality that's a veteran, disabled veteran? There are some climber tree stands on the market now that are electric, that allows somebody that is an amputee to pick out a tree and climb up. So we have an option for uh, a veteran in the city or somebody who has an amputee from whatever reason. So there's a, there's a leeway there. There's a little bit of flexibility. The additional, uh, additionally, uh, it talks in the fact that there's a discussion of having um, tape, marking tape, trail tape, if you will, um, twice wrapped around the tree. You can get uh, this, I mean, I would, it's not a big deal. It's, a, it's one inch by 200 yards, I think, you can buy it for three feet. Wrapped around the tree twice, it comes in different colors. That way, when they come out in the middle of the season to make sure that the hunter has a move to stand, it's easy to identify what tree it was originally uh, approved by. Just a, it's a spot, spotting mechanism is all it is. So uh, we, I can go out in the middle of the season or beginning of the season. Additionally, if I think there's any uh, foul play, make sure that that hunter has a move to stand around. That was the thinking behind that. Everything else um, is pretty much near that of mentors uh, program. It, oh, additionally, one more. The mentor program actually, this is an error in, in my judgment on mentors program, which is they actually use the word doe in their ordinance. Um, if you want to control a herd, you control the female because they're the ones that drop the fawns. So they use the word doe. This created a lot of stress for a lot of the hunters in that city because. Um, if you want to have a controlled hunt, if you want to have a call, you have to manage the female population because they drop the fawns. Well, 
if you have a hunter, it's a little unreasonable. If you have a hunter that's um, 20 feet up in a tree, and you got brown leaves on the ground, you got a brown deer, you, it's, and if he discharges his arrow to harvest that deer, it ends up it was a button buck. Technically, that hunter is in violation. That's not very reasonable. Do we want to try and have them to get a, a doe first? Sure, but let's use the word antlerless instead of doe. It's a little bit more reasonable and prudent. Those are the only three, uh, only a couple of alterations uh, from Miner's program compared to Miner's factor compared to the East Lakes factor. That's all. That's all. Something. Thank you. Um, some of the things that I've been looking at because I noticed that in the first presentation that you were looking to go with three contiguous acres and a lot of the municipalities that I'm seeing that approved it to the, by the voters last year were at five contiguous acres and also that and from what I understand is that uh, Willoughby is not moving forward with anything the Metro Parks and my concern would be is even if we were to approve something like this in my opinion I would like to see that you know to five acres um, but we also have to look at is if you if it was approved and you call say 40 30 40 deer along the Willoughby line and if they are they just going to come over from Willoughby or the Metro Parks and you know are we just going to be fighting a battle that you know it's endless right well I I would offer uh, in my opinion the Many of the cities do start off with five. For example, Minner started off with five, and then they toned it down to three because five, it doesn't have three or five. As long as the deer can drop on the land they're hunting, who really cares? So yes, many cities do start off with five, but over time they taper it back because it's just, it doesn't make sense. So I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I would offer that perhaps also with a city w which is smaller than ours, and as, as ours, and has smaller lots, three would be, would suffice, okay? As far as not having the Metro Parks or, or really be on board um, and moving at the same pace we are, um, I can understand your concern with that. I guess my argument would be if we eradicated all of the deer in the city of East Lake, that will not ever solve the problem. Once we control the herd, you still have the issue of maintenance. So, uh, you have to move forward in some direction. I mean, we have to do something. So, uh, is it going to be a never ending battle? Uh, much of life is. Uh, so, are we going to solve the problem? No, you'll never solve the problem in a city environment that we live here. But should we do something? This is a logical option. And the other thing, um, I had an email back in, in on March 1st where we had questioned uh, Chief Reich in regards to approximating how many accidents. Um, he said there was approximately 174 accidents involving deer from January 1st, 2010 through today, which was March 1st, uh, from his email. So when you take the amount of days over those six you know, years and a couple months, you know, the amount of accidents was like at that .077. It was very minimal of what we're seeing in, in our city. I would also uh, say that if you took a look at that ratio, um, that's probably actually within reasonable parameters as far as ODNR is concerned. That's not an unreasonably high number for our city, but I, don't, I think that's just part of the puzzle. It's really more the issue of you can't have any kind of vegetation because they're eating everything. So um, the car versus deer accident, it's, a, it's part of the puzzle. It's not a reasonable number um, for our city, uh, but I think that's just, I, I think that's one part of the pie chart. Mayor Marley? I think, and I think we've talked about this the first meeting, more, the most calls that I get are about, obviously, as, as Todd said, about the nuisance. Um, the big areas that most of the calls are from are the Surfside area, where, the, where it backs up to the park. Uh, we have Reeves Road, Reeves Road area, um, and then we have uh, Erie Road over there by Rural. Those are, the, those are the spots that most of the people have called about in the city. Uh, so again, you know, we're looking at to see if, if this is where we want to go. You know, unfortunately, the way the Gazette works, we couldn't. I had my article in before we set this meeting, so um, you know, the first meeting we had about 30. Obviously, today we have two. So, um, you know, again, I think Todd wants to look at some timeline and if, if this is where you want to go. If you don't want to go, then I just I think he would like to know that too, and then 
Uh, and, I'm, and we're not looking for an answer tonight. Correct. But, you know, the, this is, and I've told Todd, this is not going to be something that's just, uh, we can just move quickly on. We need to get all our facts and get all our information. And that's what we've been doing between Todd and I. And when we have some, when I, especially when I have time to go and get the other city's ordinances and what they've passed. So um, that's what the goal is here. To uh, see where we can go. Uh, any, Mr. Zurn. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Tom. Um, are there any uh, surrounding cities that have this uh, deer hunting ordinance? Which city in there? Okay. I know it's the only one, all the other ones. Uh, Kirtland uh, has one. Um, there's Hunting Valley, I believe, has one. There, there's a couple of cities down by Hunting Valley and Woodmere that have have a sag, I want to say sag Shaker one. just started one. Shaker just started one, yeah. Parkland, Bromview Heights. Right. I think those are just sent over in. But those are, in our area, the one I'm most familiar with would be better. Yeah. Do you know what the statistics are on deers taken in two Yes, I, that was in my PowerPoint. In fact, uh, give me a second, I can pull that up. Just an idea. Do the five acres, see if we have any problems, and then as an idea, and then see, you know, negotiate from that point. It's just an idea. The other concern of mine would be that those five acres have to be posted and posted publicly that there's hunting on that land, even if it's private land. Mm -hmm. um, the safety zone, 50 feet, I don't think is enough. Okay. I, 
I darn sure wouldn't want somebody 50 feet from my neighbor's house hunting deer. I would be more satisfied. I'd say 100 yards, but 100 yards in the city is a little stretch. So. And we're bringing up concerns here that are things that need to be looked at. So. Mr. Bogan, were you able to come up with the answer for Mr. Zimmer? I have questions. Yeah, I'm working. I'm I think we found them over here. Uh, oh, and I'm not sure. Well, please, yes, sir. Anybody else on time? Mr. Spot. My concern is that without a study with the actual numbers, without those numbers, this is a lot of you expect to go forward with anything. Without those numbers. Without a study saying we're within <coughs> so many per square mile, and it seems to be the study, every study I saw in the teens is usually where they like to be. Uh, without that number, it would be kind of that's a non starter. We need that, I need to know that number. Are you talking about if we did an aerial, or what are yeah. you looking for? This is a really a problem, and they're going by, I've seen a lot of the studies are going, something at 40 per square mile, that's a problem. A lot of them would like to be down in the teens. I mean, if we're down in the teens now, then it's not a problem. I guess we could talk, I, mean, I don't know if the Metro Park, the, the first, I had a meeting with the Metro Parks probably a year ago. <clears throat> I don't know if they had any numbers or not that I could get from them, but I don't know about our area. But again, we talked, I talked, and I'll talk to Mary Anderson again about the aerial. I know he just, at that time, just. Um, but then it becomes a financial problem, too, that we don't have the money. Mr. Evers? Talking with ODNR, the best time to do the aerial is in the winter. They cannot do them in the summer when the leaves are on the trees. They prefer that the snow be on the ground. The deer are easier to so that would eliminate anything this year. Mr. Kostonek, any or John, Mr. Myers, any questions from you guys? Or? Just a quick one. Uh, oh, it's Jason Kostonek for the record. Jason Kostonek. Um, the or proposed ordinance you see here, it says, I, I take it this is just a type of correct, but the, the city of Benner will begin processing. Uh, that's right. right. That's, okay. That was it. <clears throat> Like I just we're, we're better, better, better than this. That's right. First paragraph. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the first drafts I sent out. That was my okay. um, And is that aerial survey, is that a requirement? Does anyone know whether that's a requirement or if it's just a suggestion? I think it's a suggestion. I, I, I can try to get all the information I have to you guys. I, I thought I did, and maybe I did not, on, from all the other meetings I've had with the ODNR, and I, I'll make copies of everything we'll try to get it over. Would it, at, at a future meeting for, I take it this is the last meeting we'll have on this subject, could we have an ODNR representative sit in on that meeting? So, so do you have contacts with Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, more than one ranger that they actually have a ordinance written that they say, we suggest you use this, because right. they've done this so many times. Right. Yeah, I just, I just want to make sure, you know, I can I comply that we're full <coughs> compliance or anything we do move forward on anything. <coughs> I, I, can, I can reach out to ODI. There's more than one ranger I'm sure would be more than that. And, and said, Mayor Morley. And I thought what Ken said in the beginning of the meeting, we're just right and, and I've told Todd that we just this this fact finding that right now to try to get all the information together. So when we do, if we decide we're gonna go somewhere we bring our residents in. Uh, again, you know Again, the call or just this is a nuisance. It's not about the accidents. Cause I talked to Chief Wright about that too. So, Mr. Zerner, you had another question? Yeah, I had a, another question regarding um, it kind of is derived off of uh, Mr. Rogers' question um, regarding public safety um, under page nine, section I. Uh, it talks about a wounded deer um, going into uh, an, a zone that is not set for hunting. Um, you mentioned the, the one that you knew about in Menor was two houses away. That was the farthest that it's that it left the area. Yeah, where it was deer aware of. Um, are there any statistics on how many deer in Menor well, yearly? Actually, they had to call the police to have them euthanize the deer I, or kill the deer. I would like to think that they would keep records of that, I, and I can generate that information for you. That's your pleasure. I can tell you right here now, Odinar does not. I know that for a fact, but as far as how many times mayor's been called out for for uh, uh, something, they have three wildlife officers. They well, they they have they start with three. They're down to two. They're trying to look for another one. Okay, 
So that if they were the ones called, they would probably have some. I would, I would like to think that their record keeping would be well established with three employees. Yeah. Mayor Marley? I can check with the Mentor um, okay. City Manager and see if, if we line up another meeting, if we can get a ODNR rep there and someone from City of Mentor maybe that does, does their program. So I marked down ODNR rep and Mentor rep and we'll try to coordinate that. Spot. ODNR is going to re require more to pull a permit with them. It's going to require more than just us saying this needs to be done, right? No. Or can you get any statistics, any count? Nothing. Well, <coughs> it's a, well, I mean, besides, no offense, somebody coming up and just saying we need to do this, let's go do it. Well, well, actually, it depends on what type of hunt you do. If you do a control hunt versus a, um, a call, we're using these terms interchangeably, the definitions of them are different. For example, a true coning permit is takes about a year's worth of study by a biologist. Um, it's sent to one person, in, from my understanding, it's sent to one person in Columbus, and he says either yes or no, and that's the end of it. Um, that's for a true cull. What we're looking at is more along the lines of a controlled hunt. The state of Ohio would allow somebody to go hunting on St. Lawrence Boulevard right now. It's prohibited by city ordinance. So what we're looking at doing is relaxing that and allowing with regulation. So if a park, if the ODNR came in here right now, um, they would say that violation of state law, peace be with you, right? So uh, in one regard, you're right. In one regard, you're wrong because we're using these terms uh, not by specific definition. Right. We're just doing the right. right. Any other questions from anybody on council, Mr. Myers, or anybody, Mr. Men, do you have anything? Um, I just was wondering if they know, like, how do they get permission? I know typically they would probably knock on their door, but what would be my responsibility of giving out their names and stuff like that? Because I get people come up to us a lot of times. Mr. Everett? Before we even got to that, I think we'd need to sit down with you and look at the map, the zoning map. Yes. And decide these areas are totally off limits Correct. or these areas are open. Correct. And I would recommend if this ever does go through that a map be attached to the application so they exactly know where the zone is. Yes. And then uh, I guess, you know, what happens if it's a bank owned property? I know there's a form in here that says that they need to get. Uh, uh, looks like they have to have a uh, certified uh, sealed stamp and everything. But um, has that ever come up with bank home properties? Um, well, first and foremost, <coughs> I would recommend that um, mice. To, I'm just throwing an idea that we don't relinquish people's names and numbers. You might get somebody who says, "Please let hunters know I'm, I'm welcoming them on my land." That may occur. That has happened in other cities. Um, but I would recommend that we go to the county auditor's webpage, the GIES, GIS, mm -hmm. and just have, them, have the hunter do the research on his own. Um, as far as uh, some private uh, business owned land, bank owned land, uh, I'm on 14 acres in Minner, 14.14 14 acres, and it was satisfied uh, all requirements to have just one of the owners of the company sign it. As far as bank owned, I, I don't, I can't, I would, well, I would be surprised if a bank even said yes to allow somebody to hunt on a, on a uh, um, repo house. You know what I'm saying? I'd be real surprised by that. But if it's a privately owned business land, for example, uh, Osborne, um, I, I, if you had like the proper, property owner of the business or uh, manager of that land, somebody who's responsible for that land, that probably would suffice. Any other questions? Okay, as we said at the beginning of the meeting, this is just for fact finding anyway, so uh, we've got this information. We'll just uh, table this meeting then. Uh, <coughs> was there anything under miscellaneous? Mr. Evans, do you have something on? Yeah, I need to, uh, from an EPAL standpoint, for our lease, any improvements we make to the East Lake Community Center uh, kind of needs the approval of council. We're working with retired Fire Marshal Lonnie Pucci and our current Fire Marshal 
Lieutenant Drake to replace the uh, fire alarm system, which is pretty antiquated. Uh, there will be no cost to the city. I will be coming to work with Mr. Men tomorrow or the day after once the plans are there. I just need to inform council that we are going ahead with this. Again, there is no cost whatsoever to the city. So, um, one of the improvements we're making. And if there's any objections, please give me a call. Or, you know, talk to me afterwards. Mr. Barber, just I just want to take this opportunity to uh, remind council that as far as the costs that are involved in this, I, I was the one that said that I'm still willing to, do, to volunteer my time to manage the program for the city. And we've had that discussion, I, you know, in most of the other areas and, and just sat down with the chief that, you know, I can't have the chief start doing this. He's doing as well too, much, too many things now, so. And Mr. Bogler is aware of that, so. Again, and the, the chief is off on vacation, but he is going to do some more research once he sees where, uh, I guess, city council wants to go with this. Okay, at this time we'll do recognition of the public, half hour total, three minutes per person. Uh, is there anybody here who would like to address council? Yeah, uh, Mr. Fogel, what? Oh, well, well, oh. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, Bob Spangenberg, 1034 East Lake Drive. Thank you, Mr. Satisfied? Mr. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Vogel, what is your expertise in this field? That's my question to you. Uh, um, well, I'm a master instructor for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Um, some of my background, uh, I have a degree in criminal justice. I've been a police officer for over 20 years. I'm currently a federal narcotics officer. Um, I've been hunting for years. I've been a fisherman for years, but I'm also an instructor for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Okay, that's my only question. I just wanted to know my pleasure, sir. No, who I was talking to. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Spangenberg. Okay, seeing nothing else, we will adjourn this meeting at 5.57 p.m.